Welcome back to Grace, everyone. I hope you all tuned in last week for our lesson, John the Baptist Was Born. Today we celebrate Jesus' birth kind of a little bit early for this year, isn't it? Today, well, first of all, where am I? I doubt this is a room any of you have been in, so I'll let you know sooner rather than later where I am. So as we get into Jesus' birth, it's important to remember that Jesus' life as a human had a definite starting point when Mary became pregnant with him. Even so, God the Son has always existed since even before the creation of the world. We have talked about that many times in Grace Heaven when we've gotten out the timeline. Jesus existed even before the creation of the world. Before we actually start the story, I want to remind you that God's people waited a long time for this Messiah to come. How many years did they wait? Well, if you consider that God promised a Messiah way back when Adam was born, so Adam, up to the time Jesus was born, experts think it's anywhere, 4,000, 6,000 years, whatever, thousands of years before this Messiah actually came. And that is a long time to wait for something, isn't it? To help illustrate this, I'm going to just sit here for one minute. So we can see how long a minute is. When one minute is done, someone will let me know. Ready? Here we go. One minute starting now. while I was waiting. That seemed like a long time. Imagine waiting thousands of years that God's people did waiting for that Messiah. Now let's get into the Bible story that you've heard so many times before. After the angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah and predicted the birth of John, he appeared to Mary and predicted that she too would have a baby. This baby would be named Jesus and he would be God's son. The angel said he will be great and will be called the son of the most high and his kingdom will have no end. After that, Mary visited Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth who was pregnant with John and inside Elizabeth's tummy while she was pregnant with John, John leaped for joy when he heard that Mary was gonna carry the son of God. And so we know the story Mary and Joseph lived in Nazareth, and when Caesar Augustus called for a census, they traveled to Bethlehem, the very place the Messiah was prophesied to be born. And there, in a stable, God the Son entered the world as a baby. Imagine the shepherd's surprise when an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared. The Bible says that they were terrified. Have you ever been terrified of something? I have. They were terrified. But what's usually the first thing an angel says to somebody? You know it. Do not be afraid. And the angel also said, Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this Savior, the long-awaited Deliverer and Redeemer, has finally come. And not only did Jesus come into the world as the Savior, he came as a king. Sometime after Jesus' birth, wise men came to worship Jesus, and they brought him gifts suitable for a king. You know what they were, right? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
Jesus is the king who will rule forever, just as God promised. And this is one of the most important things about this story. Jesus came because we needed him. The purpose of Jesus' birth was twofold. One, to bring glory to God. And two, to make peace between God and those of us who believe in Jesus' death and resurrection. Celebrating the birth of Jesus is all about rejoicing over the greatest gift ever. And God's very own Son came to earth to be our Savior and King. So to illustrate this point, it's good timing that noise came on right now. To illustrate the point of how Jesus left the splendor of heaven, have you ever thought about how beautiful heaven was? Streets of gold, pearly gates, all that kind of stuff. Beautiful. We can't even imagine. Jesus left that to come to earth. And I'm going to show you right now where I am. I'm in the boiler room. Now this room is dirty and gross. Let me show you. Here's the boiler room. We got pipes and just grossness and ladders are in here and big old gray things. I don't even know what they are. Trash bins, awful looking walls. This is the boiler room. It keeps our church warm. That's where I am right now. It's gross. Now think about if I invited some, someone to church at Christmas time and I said, why don't you come over to Seymour? I'm going to take you down to the boiler room. Come on down. This is where you really need to be today. You think they'd be surprised? You think maybe they would have expected to see the beautiful sanctuary? You know how that always looks at Christmas time. We have, we have candles everywhere and greenery and gold stuff and flowers and garlands and wreaths. And it's just beautiful. And said, you know, let's go down to the boiler room. You think they would appreciate being in such an ugly place as this? But that's a little like what happened with Jesus. He had experienced the splendor of heaven, a place so beautiful we can't even imagine what it must look like. In order to come to a stable with filthy animals, smelly air, drafty, ugly, a place with animals and being put in a feed trough where the cows eat, putting your baby there, it sounds so unsanitary, doesn't it? He left the splendor of heaven to come down to earth that way. Do you ever wonder if more people would have paid attention to him if he had grown up in a nicer place instead of starting out in the stable? But God had reasons for everything. One reason is because God wanted to show us that Jesus came to bring salvation to everyone. Not just the rich and the powerful, but the poor and the downtrodden as well. He left heaven on purpose to share in our poverty. Another reason he left heaven is because Jesus was poor. He understands what it means to be poor and how we can by, be tempted by many things. And he knows how that sad things can be in life. If I'm sad about something, he can understand that. If I'm just so excited and happy about something, he understands that too. He was human. He totally understands it all. And this is a good point to bring up the big picture question and answer. Is Jesus God or a human? And the answer is, as the Son of God, Jesus is both fully God and fully human. Which means he completely understands our feelings, our thoughts, and our temptations because he was human. But... He also has all the power and majesty and is worthy of all praise because he is God's son. Our Christ connection today reminds us that the birth of Jesus was good news. He was promised to us and delivers us from sin and death. And let's take a moment in this boiler room to pray. Dear God, you were working out your perfect plan to save sinners when you sent your son into the world as a helpless baby at just the right time. What a gift. We love you. Amen. Now today in your adventure box, you have some worksheets, but you also have a piece of Christmas fleece. And I'll be honest, I put this fleece in your boxes because I had this great idea of something we could do with a fleece. 
I'm not the craftiest of people and it didn't work out. So at the very least, you can use it for a scarf. It has a lot, it has a lot of Christmas words on like be merry, joy, all that kind of, it could be a Christmas scarf. If you were very industrious, you could cut the strips really thin and add beads to them, which I did. And let me tell you, if you need beads, I have like 10 million beads at church. Let me know what color you need and I'll get you some beads. So that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is cut squares, which I did. I cut little squares like this and I decided I could make coasters. And there's a very simple way to sew two pieces of fleece together and it's called a blanket stitch. Now, if you guys feel really industrious, Google blanket stitch. It is so easy to do that even my husband could do it. And it makes a real pretty stitch. Um, I don't know if I can show you this on, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but that's what a blanket stitch is. And it's so easy, you guys could do it. So use your imaginations and come up with something really good that you could do. Um, one more thing, I will add the new cards for the story. Here's this week's card, Jesus Was Born. I will add that to your story card board. And two reminders before we're done. No one has turned in a new name for Grace, which is a shame because the grand prize is going to be a very nice gift card to Target or Meyer or something. So you might want to get your entries in. Anybody that does get an entry in will get, get something from me as a thank you, but there will be one grand prize of a gift card. So hurry up and get these in. These are due Wednesday. And last but not least, this is the week what we will deliver more supplies for October to your adventure boxes. So be ready. I'll put out an email to parents about when we're expected to come. And so watch for that. So have a good day, everybody.